Pro headset will reportedly be sold exclusively in Apple stores and by appointment only. ABC's Andrew Dembert has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, Apple is planning to roll out its Vision Pro headset exclusively in Apple stores. So you'll have to make an appointment with Apple for a demo if you'd like to buy the headset when it launches next year. It is expected to cost $3,500. And there's a new record for Fortnite. Saturday, Fortnite OG peaked with a total of 44.7 million players. They logged a mind-numbing 102 million hours of playing time. Hourly numbers rose all weekend, peaking at more than 6 million during one stretch Saturday. Google is working to make its App Store more secure. Users will now see banners in the Google Play Store, helping them find trustworthy and safe apps, highlighting apps that have undergone independent audits. Users have the ability to learn more if they click on the banner. There's a great app I trust for a pun about this, but you've probably read it before. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. So is that where he's getting his puns? Uh, online? <laughs> Or is he using ChatGPT now? Oh my gosh. You know what? He that's, may be using artificial that's intelligence. That's actually a good idea. No, you don't think so, Mike? Nah. Mike's a little skeptical. <laughs> I understand. 517, 66 degrees. Let's take a look outside with the roads. Trans Guide. Stephen Cavazos, he's going to give us an update on the roads when we come back. There's something going around the Gordon hole. Good thing Gertrude found Delsum. Now what's going around is 12-hour cough relief. And the giggles. The family that takes Delsum together feels better together. Your shipping manager left to find themselves, leaving you lost. You need to hire. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. Indeed Instant Match instantly delivers quality candidates matching your job description. Visit Indeed.com slash hire. Confession, I almost put up my Christmas tree this weekend. Oh. There's an empty spot in my, my, my living room, and yeah. I'm looking at that spot on the wall going, mm. Soon, soon. This weekend. This it's weekend. Gonna be nice. This coming weekend. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, you know what? I actually went to go look for a Christmas tree over the weekend. So you're yeah. not alone. I think a lot of people are really itching towards. Because uh, you it want it to last a little bit longer. Absolutely. That's not. Exactly say what you're going to say. Oh, yeah. I they, wasn't going to say okay. anything to you, Mike. Hey, Stephen, 49 hey. days till Christmas. Oh, gosh. Uh, well, you know what? The countdown is on. Really? We're going to keep a close eye on that calendar, <laughs> and we're going to keep a close eye on the roadways here. Let's get a look outside as we see traffic's just shaping up to be a little bit busier in some spots, but there at 10 at the Y and 10 at Medical, not too bad. We're seeing light traffic in the east and westbound lanes there, and there at 10 at Probant, not a lot of folks out there. But as we showed you earlier, there was some overnight construction that should have cleared up earlier. There it is at 410 at Ray Ellison heading southbound. You may see some delays out there. Traffic down to just one lane. And as we get the new work week rolling here, we have more road work expected along US 90. Installation work will take place later this morning around 9. Should take us to the end of the work week, Friday, November 10th. But remember, this ends at 3 this afternoon. So drivers, during that time, you're going to see alternating ramp closures. That's from 36th Street to Couples Road. As I mentioned earlier, it's, new, it's a new week, so new closures. Head over to our website by scanning this QR code. That takes you directly to our KSAT traffic page, and we have a full list of all the closures on our website. I don't think we have that QR code up yet, but don't worry. We'll get it on your screens in the next hour, so just plan your commute. There it is. Thank you to our directors. And again, plan that commute ahead of time because there's a lot happening, as you just saw on our trans guide cameras there, Mike. Thank you very much. Sir, all right, beautiful. Yesterday, if you didn't have any of that fog, we had some fairly clear skies. By the way, there's the uh, QR code Sim was just talking about there. All right, and so some folks had an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous sunrise, case in point, but yeah, this is like a Bob Ross kind of painting. Thank you very much for uh, for that one. All right, looking off to the east, and uh, we had uh, just one or two little clouds that kind of showed up in this picture, and I won't keep that up there too long with that blinking light because that kind of gives you a headache. Anyway, as far as visibility right now, not bad in and around the metropolitan area. The hint of fog, New Braunfels, Gonzales, about the same situation at this time yesterday, and then all of a sudden the fog really started to thicken up, but it's not quite as far west this morning as 
as it was yesterday. We've got still the thickest fog down there uh, right around Beeville. Humidity, of course, is very high and it's going to be staying that way throughout the rest of today as well as the next couple of days. We still keep the slow coming in here off of the Gulf of Mexico, but that will definitely start to change once we get in toward Thursday. So patch it to a fog. Just you know, be on the lookout for it. Temperature is going to be staying steady this morning. We are going to keep a lot of clouds around. We did keep a bunch of them around yesterday. There was a little bit of sunshine thrown on in. So similar situation today, 78 at noon. So already above the normal high temperature. We finish up at 82. So on average, five, in some cases close to 10 degrees above normal later on today. And that's also going to be the situation uh, tomorrow as well as on Wednesday. Plenty of clouds that are moving on in here. We still have this flow coming in uh, all the moisture from the Pacific Ocean up to the north. Everything is moving just about straight west to east. That's that zonal flow we've been talking about, which means nothing really changes around here. And that will be the situation the first half of the week. But then we get that front moving through by Thursday afternoon. So that's going to bring some fairly significant changes. We stay very consistent the next few days. Uh, it's also going to be somewhat breezy today. Then on Thursday, front's going to be coming through. It looks like timing is going to be mid afternoon, obviously a little earlier in the hill country. And so that's going to give us a chance then as it moves on through here for some showers, thunderstorms overnight into Friday, maybe even a couple of uh, hefty downpours here and there. Temperatures, we will drop to the uh, mid 50s Friday morning, then only stay in the 60s. A lot of cloud cover around here. Rain primarily first half of the day on Friday. Um, there could be a lingering shower here or there over the weekend. I, I didn't even put anything in the forecast right now, but basically just cloudy skies and temperatures only in the 60s over the weekend. So very nice. And of course, Saturday Veterans Day. Thank you, Mike. Mm -hmm. Time now 525, 66 degrees. As it gets cooler across South Texas, up next, what one local organization is doing now to make sure kids don't have any problems staying warm later. Winter season right around the corner. One local organization is making sure kids in our area are able to stay warm once temperatures drop again. United Way is hosting their ninth annual Project Warmth Coat Drive. Their goal is to get at least 500 coats donated before Thanksgiving. All the donated coats go to families United Way serves. It's going to help countless families um, and it's going to provide them, you know, a little bit of comfort during the next couple months. Donations will be accepted through November 21st at several local coffee shops in our area. Those include the Starbucks in the Quarry, Early Bird Coffee on I-10, and Almost Perk on McCullough. People can actually go to these coffee shops, get a nice cup of coffee, especially support a, a small business in the case of Early Bird and Almost Perk, um, and drop off a coat to help make a difference in a child's life. You can also donate by texting Project Warmth to 41444 or by heading to United Way's website, you can find a link on ksat.com. It's 528 and 66 degrees. The 2024 election is coming up in just a year and just ahead where the candidates stand so far and what Congress may look like 12 months from now. And ahead on GMSA at six, your Thanksgiving bill could look a little different this year. We'll let you know what to grab at the grocery store. With one year to go until the pivotal 2024 election, lots of questions remain. Donald Trump is missing in action. No, I think the party needs a new generational leader. Up next, we look at the state status of the race, the key issues likely to be front and center, and how the fight for Congress looks so far. 66 degrees out there this morning at 532. It's a bit warm, but Mike says we have a cold front on the way in just a couple of days. He'll let us know when to expect it. Good morning, everybody. It's Monday, November 6th. Good morning. Thank you so much for starting your morning good with morning. us. Hi. Hey, good to morning. see you again. Good to see you. <laughs> you are. Seven. Good, okay. <laughs> good to be with you, gentlemen, hey. this morning. Good to have you with us, Sarah. Mike, hey. how are you doing over there? Greeting and salutations yes. over there. So uh, I'm, I'm excited because the front and the timing yeah. of this and everything like that's going to work out perfectly because Steph and I are going to be at the Alamo Quarry on Saturday oh. to welcome the big guy. Santa. The big guy. The big, big guy? The big, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the guy. So come on out there Saturday evening, and it's going to be nice and cool out there. In years past, it's been a little warm to see any snow out there, but uh, hopefully Santa brings his magic, so that's going to be Saturday evening. All right, starting off right now, uh, you want to watch out for a hint of fog around the area. Nothing showing up in this picture, and we've got a temperature right now 
way above where it should be. We're 10, 15 degrees above normal on average around the area and see how the temperature and then the dew point. Those are running neck and neck. Now we do have a bit of a breeze and that usually helps to prevent fog from forming up and that's one of the reasons that we don't have a lot out there. But let me just go back to this shot real quick and you can almost kind of see that little bit of a fuzzy look along the horizon, kind of like what we had around here yesterday. And remember yesterday, as the morning rolled on, really started to see a lot of thick fog around New Braunfels as well as Randolph. Nothing going on right now. Hint of it there, a reduced visibility in New Braunfels as well as Gonzales. Half mile down there at Beeville. So you get on 37, you're going to run into a lot of that fog as well as up by Austin again this morning. And we'll just have to watch the progression of this over the next couple of hours. Mid 60s, well, with a couple of exceptions over there around Hondo and Uvalde. But yeah, it's just warm out there. Mold, ragweed, fall elm are all on the low side, mostly cloudy today, kind of like yesterday, right around low 80s, breezy, and then very warm the next couple of days. We stay in the low and even close to the mid 80s, so we're going to be anywhere we're 5, 10 degrees above normal, closer to the 10 degrees above normal by Wednesday. Thursday, the front moves through in the afternoon. Rain will develop, showers, th some thunderstorms overnight, and then into the first part of the day on Friday. It's going to be windy on Friday as well. Windy on Saturday. Not looking at any rain over the weekend. Some models want to keep a stray shower around here. That's kind of a wait and see situation, but uh, yeah, it's going to be cool. We'll be roughly 10 degrees below normal for high temperatures over the weekend. So it's going to be fantastic. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, anything going on? Not yet, Mike. Uh, thankfully, traffic's picking up, but no issues are being detected. Let's get a look outside and show our drivers what they can expect this early in the morning. Behind me, 37 at Jones Avenue is still really quiet, but picking up a bit there at 37 at Fair Avenue as we see traffic coming right at your screen. 410 at Blanco, these cameras are showing us that the roads are yeah, getting busier, but they're not really seeing any issues. We did have some overnight construction that was taking place along Loop 410 over on the southwest side, and it does look like we still have a little bit of a delay for drivers over there that are heading southbound, so crews may be wrapping up, but other than that, our roads should be clear for you this morning. Heading into the Alamo City, well, that journey from Bernie along I-10 eastbound is 23 minutes at this hour. 281 southbound, no need to hurry if you're traveling in from Bulverde. We have 25 minutes for you. And right now, not too awful from New Braunfels. I-35 southbound, you can expect about 24 minutes to get right here to the Alamo City. But back here on Transguide, I'm going to continue to keep a close eye on things, and I'll have another update for you coming up a little bit later on in the newscast. Sarah. Stephen, thank you. New this morning, San Antonio police are looking for a man who settled an argument with gunfire. They say he shot another man, leaving him critically wounded. Our Katrina Weber is live at Public Safety Headquarters, where the investigation continues this morning. So, Katrina, is there an update on the man who was shot? Yeah, it, it appears that he's still in the hospital, still in critical condition after being shot in his stomach. A police found him in the parking lot of a convenience store at the corner of North Sarsamora and Culebra Road. He was rushed to a hospital by ambulance. Officers have been called to that area after 11 last night. They say the wounded man was arguing or fighting with another man over some sort of property. At one point, they say the other man pulled out a gun and shot him. Now, the only description police had for the shooter had to do with his car, a dark colored vehicle. They're still trying to figure out who he was and track him down. Reporting live at Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. 536ers now one year to go until the pivotal 2024 elections. And this morning, lots of questions remain on who the top candidates will be and how Congress could look afterward. So ABC's Jay O'Brien takes a look at the status of the race so far. One year out from the presidential election and former President Donald Trump returning to the spotlight. Numerous polls show him dominating the Republican primary field, despite spending much of the last few months in court. Facing four history-making indictments in New York, Florida, Washington, D.C., and Fulton County, Georgia. The last two centering on Trump's alleged attempts to overturn the results of the previous presidential election. We have one set of laws in this country and they apply to everyone. To all four indictments, the former president pleading not guilty, his base undeterred. Other Republican voters yet to coalesce around an alternative to Trump. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis calling for a new generation of GOP leadership. 
Donald Trump is missing in action. White House hopefuls like Nikki Haley, Tim Scott, and Vivek Ramaswamy trying to stand out to primary voters. You know, I think the party needs a new generational leader. We've lost the last seven out of eight popular votes for president, and that's nothing that we should be proud of. Three candidates already calling it quits, including Trump's former vice president, Mike Pence. It's become clear to me, this is not my time. Meantime, President Biden's poll numbers are sagging. 538's polling average shows 53% of Americans disapprove of his job performance. The president pitching voters on what he says are a string of successes. When I came to office, this nation was flat on its back. I knew what to do. I vaccinated the nation and rebuilt the economy. Age expected to be a defining factor in this race. Biden and Trump will be in their 80s by the end of a four-year term. While inflation has cooled and salaries and employment are rising, recent ABC News polls finding a majority of Americans disapprove of President Biden's handling of the economy. Jay O'Brien, ABC News, Washington. One person is dead. Twelve more were sent to a hospital after a public transit bus crash in Seattle over the weekend. Authorities say the bus crashed into a different vehicle before running over a pedestrian and then crashing into a building. Eleven of those victims are in stable condition. The other was in critical condition at last check. Seattle Police Department is still investigating. Well, check your freezer. Tyson Foods is recalling about 30,000 pounds of chicken nuggets. That's after some people reported finding small pieces of metal inside the nuggets. Specifically, the recall is for the 29-ounce plastic bag packages containing frozen but fully cooked breaded nuggets that are shaped like chicken patties. The packaging includes a best use date of September 4th by 2024. 539, 66 degrees. Diabetes is now one of the leading causes of death in the United States. Up next, why a local doctor with UT Health set San Antonio says about preventing it in early in kids. All right, settling into our first work day after the time change, waiting for that sun to come up sooner than later. 540, you're watching GMSA. 543 November is Diabetes Awareness Month, the time to educate ourselves about the risks, challenges, and prevention. Dr. Carolina Solis Herrera, Chief of Endocrinology Division at UT Health San Antonio, she joined us this weekend on Leading SA to discuss how problematic the situation here is it is in our community. The doctor joined us and we discussed how pervasive diabetes is in and around our San Antonio area talked about the symptoms, what to look out for, and of course, we talked about quick tips for families who are watching, what they need to know so that their children could possibly avoid this disease. So the most important thing is a healthy lifestyle. Improve your weight, eat vegetables, green vegetables, non-starchy vegetables like broccoli, cauliflower, beans, lentils and try to incorporate that in every meal. So having a good weight and good physical activity more than three times a week, 30 minutes, everything counts. So if you park a little bit farther, if you do a couple of flights of stairs, everything helps to keep you at a better weight and more physically active. We also talked about distinguishing between type one and type two diabetes, what being pre-diabetic means and special events happening around San Antonio on World Diabetes Day. That's November 14th. Of course, you can check out the full conversation with the doctor right now. Just head to ksat.com. We have leading essay every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. So guys, we'll see you next Sunday. Back to you. Thank you, Max. It's 544 and 66 degrees. Checking trans guide, waiting for the sun to come up. I saw more traffic when I came in this morning, so I hope everybody adjusted <laughs> their clocks. Uh, but uh, Stephen's here with an update on any problems we might have around the Alamo metro area when we come back. All right, we are back with another look at your morning commute. It's not been bad, but Mark mentioned as he was coming into work, there was a little bit more traffic out there. So maybe a lot of people were trying to just uh, get the day started and maybe have that cup of coffee in their morning drive time. But thankfully, there's nothing slowing anyone down there at 37 at Jones and traffic once again coming at you at 37 at Fair Avenue. As you take you to the map, not a lot to show you out there. It does appear a crash popped up off of 410 near I-35 close to the northeast side. So I'll take a closer look at that and find out how that impacts your drive time. 
time. But uh, make sure that you plan ahead, folks, because we have striping work that will continue along State Highway 151 tomorrow. It takes us up to Sunday, November 12th, but this is overnight. So any of you late night owls or early bird commuters, 9 at night to 4 in the morning is when we can see a full westbound main lane closure from Petrenko Road to West Over Hills Boulevard. And again, other than that, it's just been steady traffic as we in drive off into the 6 a.m. hour. No big issues to report here. Uh, so that's good. But uh, taking a closer look, it's a new week, and I'm seeing a little bit more scruff on these guys here, <laughs> which is nice. No shave November in full swing, and we need those donations. I was just checking our page. We gotta, we gotta get our community involved. We do. I, I think people are like, ah, oh, there's still plenty of time left in the month. Sure. I gotta get through Thanksgiving. Sure. So I, we understand people are busy and right. But the donations go a long way. Don't forget, it's yes, for absolutely. cancer research, treatment, and awareness, and all those funds will go toward people who really need it. I yeah. like this stage, though. Yeah. It's like the gray hair. Can you, yeah, yeah. Can you <laughs> throw those in? We've yeah. earned this gray hair. <laughs> <laughs> team gray hair, team just for men. And team whiskers. <laughs> and team whiskers. Yeah. And uh, right. kzad.com slash no shade. <laughs> All right. No uh, take a look outside. This weekend, we've had a lot of extra kind of high clouds out there. And so this is why even on Saturday and then uh, yesterday, and some folks, it's a little bit more difficult to see in that vantage point. But right about there, you can see sort of that ring around the moon and call it moon dog, uh, the halo around the moon. Uh, it's because of those ice crystals way up high in the atmosphere, those little thin clouds. A lot of times you can't even see them. They are just made up of those little tiny ice crystals and those act like prisms and they create kind of a sort of a rainbow or that, that ring around the moon or even the sun. We've had a lot of those shots uh, recently. So thank you very much for that. All right, let's jump ahead to Thursday. This is when the front is going to be coming on through here. It will produce some rain again. Wide, broad brush, you know, sweeping with this, but it's got some decent rain chances around here, especially going into the evening hours Thursday, overnight into early Friday morning. As of right now, it looks like, again, things can change a little bit, but Thursday afternoons commute, Friday mornings commute, definitely going to be on the, uh, the wet side. We might even see a couple of heavier downpours here and there. Then much of the rain is going to be coming to an end by later in the day on Friday. So that's going to set us up for good football weather on Friday night, and it is going to be nice and cool as well. There may be a couple of leftover showers over the weekend, but Really not counting on that. As of right now, here's what's going on. We've got this zonal pattern. Everything's moving straight west to east, and so that's why we're not seeing any big changes in the forecast around here. But there is another trough which is digging, and some of this cooler air starts to sag down to the south, and that's what's going to bring in some of these cooler temperatures, that front, as well as that uh, chance of rain coming in here for uh, the weekend and or for Friday, and then the cooler air that's going to be sticking around in here for the weekend. So it's looking like a nice fall. You you know, cool temperatures around here. What's interesting is the current temperature is going to be our high over the weekend. Mid 60s right now. Watch out for a couple of patches of fog. Not much out there, however. 78 degrees by noon and then high temperature today up to 82. So we're still going to be anywhere from 5, 10 degrees above normal. And as far as the, the dew point trend over the uh, next few days, it's going to stay very warm and humid. However, we will then see that uh, drier air, somewhat drier air coming in here for the weekend, but it will be cooler air when that front moves on through here. So 60 on Friday, mid 60s over the weekend with those showers, especially Thursday afternoon, overnight, and the first part of the day on Friday. Thank you, Mike. Like in the forecast. <laughs> Let's do. 552, 66 degrees. Up next in entertainment news, we've got a holiday themed podcast, a high flying action flick, and of course, the latest on Taylor Swift. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, former President Trump expected to testify in his civil case in New York. We're going to tell you what's at stake. Also, the latest on the war between Israel and Gaza as our reporter goes into Gaza for the first time since the war began, embedded with Israeli forces. You'll see those stories and so much more right here on GMA. Cherry lips, crystal skies, I can show you incredible things. Taylor Swift has outdone herself yet again. 1989 Taylor's version tops the Billboard 200 with her best first week tally for an album ever. Billboard says it's the biggest first week for any album since another disc named for a number, Adele's 25, nearly eight years ago. 
half a billion in gold is on its way to a terrorist cell. And the gold needs to disappear. What's your plan? We gotta steal it mid-flight, 40,000 feet in the air. We're taking the plane, the whole plane? It's kinda hard to take half a plane. Kevin Hart's Cyrus Whitaker leads a criminal crew forced by an Interpol agent played by Gugu Mbata Raw to pull off a mid-air heist in Lyft. Netflix just released the first trailer for the action thriller, which lands on the streaming service January 12th. I am now court ordered to host my very own late night talk show. Deck the halls and brace for Tis the Grinch holiday talk show. Saturday Night Live's James Austin Johnson channels Dr. Seuss's green grumpy Christmas curmudgeon for the Wondery podcast, which debuts today. Hanging with the who's down in Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Ahead the next hour, GMSA, we're coming out of one of the most expensive Halloweens, what Thanksgiving could look like for your wallet. Plus, is it the best option to dip into your retirement savings? We'll take a look at other ways to save as well as how the different generations are preparing for retirement. Tomorrow's your last chance to cast your vote. What's on the ballot and where to find the nearest polling place? That's all happening and so much more on GMSA at 6. But before we go to break, let's check Transguide one more time, scanning the cameras around the highways and byways of the Alamo City. Traffic is starting to build out there with the time change and all. We'll be right back. As a community in Maine grieves from last month's mass shooting, we're looking back at the 2017 Sutherland Spring shooting. It was six years from yesterday. What a local attorney says could have prevented both tragedies. And this morning, we're talking all things money from what trends finance experts are seeing this month to how much your Thanksgiving meal might cost. And taking a look outside with Live cam, 66 degrees at 6 a.m. Hey, it's a little bit muggy out there and warmer today, but Mike says a cool front is going to be here in a couple of days. He'll explain that in just a bit. Live from Chase at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And good morning to you. It is Monday, November 6th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Uh, good to see that you gentlemen are growing in your beards nicely for No Shave November. We're six days in, or did you guys get a head start? Mike got a bit of a head start. I got start. a head start. Okay. Yeah, that's all right. But we're catching up pretty quick now. Yeah. I, no, we're not. Never mind. I just <laughs> I just got a closer look. I stopped, I stopped shaving uh, last time was the Friday before Halloween. So, okay. so it's been a little more than almost a week and a half. Did you see so. me change my mind as I literally? Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> Hasn't started itching yet. I'll just say that. But okay. again, for good cause, if you can donate, that would really help out. All right. You were talking about the mugginess and yesterday as well as Saturday we had some fog in the morning and we've got some of that around here this morning as well. Nothing showing up in this picture, but notice how now all of a sudden New Braunfels, which was about eight miles visibility. Now you're down to just one mile visibility, so it popped up that quickly and as like yesterday when that starts to develop there around New Braunfels likes to kind of work its way down 35 a little bit. So watch it around Randolph as well, because you're probably going to be seeing some of this fog a little bit up around Austin. Mile and three quarters at Beeville, two and a half Victoria. So again, the thickest right now is there around New Braunfels. Everybody with, well, just two exceptions there. Uvalde and uh, Hondo, a pair of 58s, but everybody's in the 60s right now. So we're anywhere from 10 to almost 15 degrees above normal. Light amounts of the allergens. The updated count comes out in about uh, an hour and a half or so. Temperature is going to be staying steady this morning. We'll have some of that fog around here and with the fog, maybe some damp roads. Then we make it up into the upper 70s above the normal high by noon and we'll top off today at 82. So anywhere from 5 to 10 degrees above normal. That that's going to be the situation not only today, but tomorrow as well as Wednesday. Then the front moves through. We'll talk about that. Rain chances and cooler temperatures just in time for the weekend. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen. Earlier this yeah. morning, there was, I know, a long line long of lights stretch out of roads. there. Yeah, you know what? Uh, that's already cleared out, Mike. And you said you start, you got a head start on no shave about a, a earlier in the, what, few days ago before? Yeah, but the last Friday of uh, October. Yeah, I stopped shaving a month ago. This is all I got, so <laughs> I'm kidding, <laughs> kidding, hey. But you know what? Uh, no jokes outside, guys. Things are looking great. 35 there, you can see these tra trans guide cameras are showing a pretty smooth commute for a lot of folks that are getting the day started early with us. If you have to head out the door, just be on the lookout. We do at least have one stalled vehicle there reported along Loop 1604 southbound. 
right there at Marbach Road. And again, this is pretty early in the morning, so we don't see a lot of issues. But if you see those flashing lights or any vehicles off to the side, make sure to move over or slow down. Thankfully, no slowdowns. If you're drought traveling in from 37 northbound from Pleasanton, it's still pleasant with 28 minutes at this hour. US 90 eastbound. If you're heading in from Castroville, your arrival should take about 28 minutes and that arrival from Lytle also 15 minutes. If you're heading along I 35 northbound, I'll continue to watch the roadways closely, but don't forget plenty of road projects are taking place. I'll tell you what to expect coming up in the next few minutes, guys. We're now seeing the person behind the mass shooting in Maine last month, as well as several failures to report and prevent that situation from happening. It's very similar to this shooting in Sutherland Springs that left 26 dead on a Sunday morning. Yesterday marked six years since Sutherland Springs. George Legrand represents some of the survivors in a suit against the government. In the 2017 shooting, the gunman bought a weapon after the Air Force failed to report his history of violence. And in Maine, similar failures have been revealed. Their main significant eerie kind of similarity is that there are laws on the books that if those laws had been complied with, those two shootings probably would have been prevented. Now, Maine has what is called a yellow flag law. It allows law enforcement to temporarily keep someone they suspect is mentally ill and poses a threat to themselves or others. In turn, that can trigger a 14 day weapon restriction by a judge, which can be drawn out to a year. Now, the main shooter was hospitalized at a mental health facility over this summer following an incident while at a military training facility. His family also repeatedly reported to law enforcement his deteriorating mental state and the fact he was heavily armed. A deputy went to the gunman's home and reported hearing a noise inside, but no one answered the door. Without making contact, the yellow flag law could not have been used. After several calls for a ceasefire, Israel was set to come under pressure today to avoid more casualties. Now Secretary of State Antony Blinken is set to meet with Turkey's foreign minister today following his unannounced visit to the West Bank to meet with Palestinian Authority President. But after Blinken repeated U.S. concerns that a ceasefire could help Hamas, Israeli Prime Minister ruled that out unless hostages held by Hamas were released. In the war zone, Israel's military says it's making progress in its ground attack, saying it has now cut Gaza in two surrounding Gaza cities ahead of an unexpected assault. The war between Israel and Hamas continues with its effects being felt all over the world. A Texas pizza shop owner was actually stranded in Gaza when Hamas terrorists descended on Israel and Israel launched a counterattack. Palestinian American Heshamaka Heshmakud and his brothers were visiting family at the time. Because the bombing, you know, there, it's a small area and there is no safe area there. Now, luckily, they were able to find safe refuge by crossing into Egypt, but many of their family members are still stuck in Gaza. Interest rates may be set for the rest of the year. Freddie Mac reports that for today, the current average interest rate for a 30 year fixed mortgage is 7.79%. That's down 26 basis points from a week ago. And the experts at Barclays now think the Fed will hold the line on the rates as its next meeting in mid December, the last of the year. But they also think the Fed could push rates up again in January. Speaking of morning money news for many Americans, their biggest stash of savings is in their retirement plan. So when faced with financial hardship, some choose to dip into that account. But is that always the best option? Here's ABC's Rena Roy with different options to consider. There are broadly two types of tax advantage retirement accounts available to American workers. An IRA is available to any working American with earned income. The other type of an account is an employer sponsored account and your employer has to offer it for you to be able to access it. And that's a 401k. Bank rate analyst James Royal says that for both IRA and 401k accounts, when you withdraw money earlier than age 59 and a half, the U.S. government imposes a 10% penalty. There are a number of hardships that allow you to take money out of an IRA and avoid the 10% bonus penalty. Uh, being flat broke, however, unfortunately, is not one of them. Qualifying hardships differ based on the type of retirement account you have, but you may be able to make a penalty-free withdrawal for medical bills. If you're permanently disabled or have a terminal illness, if you're a victim of domestic abuse after a natural disaster for your first home purchase, for higher education expenses, for debts owed to the IRS, 
and for payments to the other spouse as part of a divorce. But even if you can avoid the 10% penalty, Royal says you can't avoid the taxes, and he suggests only tapping into your retirement account if it's a last resort. So you take that money out today, and that might be a relatively modest sum of money, but you're losing the compounding over time that it could become. So if you took out $5,000 today, that could easily be forty dollars or $50,000 from your future self. Royal says there are some other options you can consider, like taking a loan from your 401k account or a bank or credit union, taking advantage of promotional credit card offers, and trying to get help from family and friends. The thing is, when you tap a retirement account early, the money comes out, but it really can't go back in. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. And according to a new report by the Mercer CFA Institute Global Pension Index, the U.S. retirement system scored a 63 out of 100. This is due to high inflation and an increase in people needing a second job. And new data from Vanguard says millennials and Gen Xers are in better financial shape than boomers when it comes to saving for retirement. That's because more employers nowadays are automatically enrolling workers in a 401k savings plan. ABC personal finance experts have three money tips they think you should be making this month. Number one, it's open enrollment season, so pay close attention when you're reviewing your benefits. This year, the share of employees who were satisfied with their benefits fell from 64% to 61%. That's the lowest satisfaction rate in 10 years. And three in 10 Gen Z workers say they regret the benefit decisions they made last open enrollment. Almost half said they didn't understand how their benefits impacted their finances. Number two, nearly 10 million people previously insured through Medicaid have been disenrolled so far this year. If you were removed from the program, you still need benefits. You can reapply for Medicaid by December 15th. And lastly, it's time to use up the rest of your flexible spending account dollars. You can use an FSA to buy sunscreen, feminine products, over-the-counter medications, medical equipment, and much more. If you're not quite sure how to spend your leftover money, check out fsastore.com. This is kind of interesting. A new study from Deloitte Insight says men are not only statistically just as likely to splurge as women on shopping, but they actually spend more money on average when they do decide to treat themselves. Deloitte surveyed consumers in about 23 countries about spending habits, compiling a database of roughly 150,000 splurge purchases with details on what shoppers bought, how much they spent, and why they made the purchase. Data shows men worldwide are spending 40% more and spend an average of $39, while women spend about $28. And it's even more for millennial men who have a median splurge of 53 bucks. And men account for 57% of global splurges on food and drinks. And if you're already planning your Thanksgiving menu, you'll notice turkey prices, they are dropping, but side dishes, they're going up. So turkey prices dropped 30% this year, according to the 2023 Wells Fargo Thanksgiving report that was released this week. However, compared to last year, canned cranberries will cost 60% more this year. Canned pumpkin is up 30% and green beans and potatoes, they're up 13%. One of San Antonio's longest holiday traditions needs some help. The annual Raul Jimenez Thanksgiving dinner needs volunteers to help the tens of thousands of people. Thanksgiving dinner, VIA is offering free bus rides to the event, which will be, as always, at the Henry V. Gonzalez Convention Center on Thanksgiving Day. If you want to sign up to be a volunteer, go to RaulJimenezDinner.com. 611 and 66 degrees. Glad you're with us on this Monday morning. A popular reality dating show is looking for contestants up in Austin. We'll tell you how you can find your next boo. And a local shelter is helping you find your next pet, but construction is causing issues with their adoptions. Outside with live cam, 66 degrees, very mild out there right now. Waiting for that sun to come up, maybe sleeping a little bit or didn't set its clock back. But uh, we're going to check in on traffic with Stephen Cavazos coming up right here live on GMSA.